everyone, I'm Emma with Wildflower Quilt Company. Thank you so much for joining us for week one of the Mid-Century Roses Quilt Along. This week we're going to be focusing on gathering your supplies. So specifically you'll need the Mid-Century Roses Quilt Pattern, which is a Wildflower Quilt Company exclusive. You can get your physical copy online or in store. Um, you can also get a PDF copy available on our website. We have four kits put together for you that you can also pick up in store or online and we will go through those now. So all of our kits use Art Gallery Pure Solids so you know you're going to be using high quality bright colors and our first colorway is called Heart of the Ocean and this includes a nice balance of cool blues and warm yellows. So the background for this kit is called creme de la creme and this is a bit more off-white than the others. For the dark leaves you're going to be using Art Gallery Asparagus, the light leaves are Appletini, the large outer rose is Heart of the Ocean, the large middle section of the rose is Parisian Blue, and the inside of the large roses is periwinkle. And then for the smaller roses, the outside is turmeric and the inside is canary. So our next colorway is called nightshade. And this is a really, really striking combination of colors, especially with that dark background. So this black is called Caviar, once again another art gallery solid. The dark leaf uses Asparagus. The light leaf is Appletini. The large outer rose is called Coral Reef. The large middle section is Grapefruit. And the middle of the large rose is Peach Sherbet. And then for the small roses, the outside is canary and the inside is honeydew. Our next colorway is called the plummy and this is a mix of purples and nice warm tones. This would be a perfect fall quilt. The background for the plummy is called white linen. The dark leaf is asparagus. The light leaf is Appletini. The outside of the large rose is Plum Preserve. The middle of the large rose is called Dried Roses. And the inside of the large rose is called Sweet Fig. And then for the small rose, the outside is called Sienna Brick. And the inside is Peach Sherbet. Our final colorway available is called Palm Springs and it's a very bright, cheerful colorway and it is what our sample is made of. So the background for Palm Spring is white linen. The dark leaves are asparagus. The light leaves are appletini. The large rose outer is tile blue. The middle of the large rose is mirage blue and the inside of the large rose is crystalline. And for the small rose the outside is apple cider and the inside is burnt orange. So these are the four kits we have available for you. You can pick them up in store or online. You can also order online for in-store pickup. But if you're not able to make it in, please be mindful that shipping can range between three to five days. So you'll wanna place your order earlier than later. Aside from your quilt pattern and your fabric, there are a few other essential quilting tools you'll need before you can get started. First, you'll need your cutting mat. You'll want one that's at least 18 inches by 24 inches because there are a number of large pieces in this quilt. To go with your cutting mat, you'll need a ruler. You can use one like this 
or you can use the stripology ruler, which helps cut cutting time down um, and it's just a really nice tool to have on hand. And we have the Stripology Squared, the Stripology Mini, or the Stripology XL. Also for cutting, you'll want a rotary cutter, um, and you might want a fresh rotary blade as well. And before you even start cutting, you'll want to be sure to press your fabrics. Um, we recommend Mary Ellen's Best Press. Um, you can save yourself a step next week by starching and pressing all your fabrics now so you can get right into cutting next week. Another essential is thread. And our personal favorite is Aurifil. Uh, we have white, black, and some other basics available. And you'll also want a good number of pins. And hopefully you won't have to use this, but just in case, you'll want a seam ripper. And there are a lot of folded corner pieces in this quilt. And to mark the corners, you may want to use a water erasing pen like this one. You might want to use Taylor chalk. We have a number of different colors available, uh, but you could also use just a pencil or a marker instead. Aside from the essentials, there are a few other tools you might want to have on hand. This here is the Fisker's Snips. This is really nice for trimming your threads as you go, um, especially if you're chain piecing. But also before quilting, you'll want to make sure all of your threads are gone, uh, regardless if you're dropping it off for long arming or if you're quilting it yourself. Another helpful tool is the Annie Stiletto. So this point here will help guide the pieces through the sewing machine and allow you to be more precise. And then on the other end, there's a tool for pressing your seams. You also might want some clips. Um, some people use these instead of pins, but they're also really helpful for binding. And our last item is the Cluck Cluck Sew Diagonal Seam Tape. And this is an alternative way um, to make the folded corners. Instead of drawing a line, you can use the guide on the tape. Feel free to come up with your own color palette or just use up your stash instead. And keep in mind, you don't have to use solids. You can use prints. We would love to see how creative you get with this quilt pattern. Thank you so much for joining week one of the Mid-Century Roses Quilt Along. Make sure to post your progress. We can't wait to see your color polls and use the hashtag MidCenturyRosesQAL to be entered to win this week's prize. See you next week.